Ka tēnā koe, Mr. Speaker. Ka tēnā koe tau, koe tau ko hoki unei ki tēnei whare o tātau. A koe hara tēnei te rā whakamutunga mō tēnei pire kia haile tunu ngā kōro ro haile tunu kia whakawoti ai a koe nei. Nā reira tēnā koe tau mea koe tau tini eitu a nā koe tau i tuku atu, nā tātau. Nā reira wai hō rātou ki a rātou ko te mea nui ko te tātou kaupapa nei e whakahui te tātou a rā ko te pire nei. Tēnā koe tau, tēnā koe tau. No mai whakapiri mai. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to again rise in support of this of the this bill to address the historical grievances of Ngai Tuhe. When this bill was introduced to the House last year, I said then and every New that every New Zealander should know the history and stories of this country. And I'm pleased to announce that right now our ministry, our Tahuhu, is working on a whole scheme to set up a um, sort of a framework by which our history can be introduced into the school curriculum because our history didn't start with Captain Cook and uh, all this, these things, the battle at Orakau and uh, Gate Pa and so on are unknown to Tauiwi. So how can they understand what it is like to be mana whenua, tangata whenua if they have not learnt that part of our history? and so on. So soon there will be in our curriculum, it'll take a while to build up as each area contributes to the content, but hopefully uh, they'll learn about the history of the locality of the school, the movement of tribes and hapu in past times, the battles, and then of course colonization and the effect on language and how their grandmothers were punished for speaking Maori in school and so on. I think this is, this is major, long overdue, to inform uh, the rest of New Zealand about our history um, in that time and even today, so that the schools can value their local marae, know their local hapu, and so on. So I'm really pleased that we've made progress in this particular area. So upon reading the historical background of the settlement, well, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge Tau and the committee uh, Māori Affairs Select Committee too, like the other two, and there's no doubt they did a really good job on this one and going out, uh, as well as having a hearing here in Wellington. And um, they, they really uh, do go unthanked, that committee. I spend the time on that committee and it does, it's, does, it does the groundwork that allows bills to go through in the final form. So upon reading the historical background to the settlement, no fair-minded person could deny or dismiss the need to resolve the injustices that ensued. Mr. Speaker, this bill documents a litany of disgraceful acts committed by the Crown against Ngai Tūhoe over many generations. For its part, the Crown apologises to Tūhoe for the indiscriminate raupatu, wrongful killings, and years of scorched earth warfare denying Tuhoe the right of self-governing Te, te Uruwera Reserve uh, by subverting that the tu, Te, te Uruwera District Native Reserve Act 1896, by excluding Tuhoe from the establishment of Te Uruwera National Park over their homelands and wrongfully treating Lake Waikaremoana as Crown property for many years. Mr. Speaker, Tuhoe has always approached resolution of its disputes with the Crown in a principled and determined uh, manner. Through this settlement, the Crown has been given a second chance to bring honour to its ongoing relationship with Tuhoe. And this bill contains an historical account of what happened in the past, together with an apology uh, and a redress, some redress. This bill provides a foundation for the future. This bill has the potential to produce transformative results for Tuhoe. Late, but here it is. History has shown that in order to build better and brighter futures for our Tamariki Mokopuna, our whānau, hapu and niwi, must, hapu and niwi must be involved in making the decisions that affect the future. Tuhoe have always stuck by the philosophy of taking care of their own, a philosophy of self-help Tamatū, tamaora, tamanoho, tamamate. 
through a social agreement to build the capacity of Ngai Tuhoi members. Ngai Tuhoi are posi positioning themselves to manage their own affairs and improve the delivery of government and iwi services to Tuhoi communities. The settlement is the enabler to a stronger Tuhoi economy. It is a lifeline that will help reinstate and redevelop Tuhoi independence and cultural permanency. These acts restore the honour of the Crown and rightly return to Tuhoi responsibility for their own health, education, housing, planning, justice and other infrastructural needs. Mr. Speaker, the key principles underpinning negotiations between the Crown and Tuhoi centred on the premise that self-government is the basic principle of democracy and that Tuhoi has the democratic right to self-government. Ko tō mana mutuhake, ko tō tuhoetanga. Ko tō tuhoetanga, tō mana mutuhake. Ka kore tēnei e hara noa tātā. Tuhoe were not signatories to the Treaty of Waitangi and have always maintained a, a right to uphold their unique Tuhoe values, always. Their culture, their language, identity within Tuhoe homelands. Through this settlement, Tuhoe has a political authority and arrangements necessary to serve the needs of Tuhoe, their families and communities in all aspects of their daily life. This is an omnibus bill to be split at a later stage into the Tuhoe Claims Settlement Bill and the Te, te, te Uruwera Bill. The parts of the bill that will become te, te Uruwera Bill will lay out striking new arrangements for the governance and management responsibilities and obligations over Te Uruwera. The bill creates an independent legal authority for Te Uruwera it recognises Te Urewera in her own right, with her own identity. Te Urewera will be released from the shackles of Crown control and will be governed by Tuhoe and Crown nominees, with Tuhoe having an increased role in management over time. Cultural values associated with Te Urewera will be captured in the bill. These include principles relating to the protection of bio biodiversity, natural and historic heritage, public input into the management and future public access. Internationally, agreements like these have been held up as important achievements for environmental protection. To promote its unique cultural values, Tuhoe will seek international recognition of Te Uruwera as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. So, Mr. Speaker, in the face of incredible injustice, today we witness the incredible generosity of the families of Tuhoe Portiki, who wish to settle their grievances with the Crown. I want to acknowledge the sacrifice, pain and injustice Ngai Tuhoe has endured due to the actions and the omissions of the Crown. So, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, Minister Finlayson. He's, um, this has been one of the most important areas of his work, and he has uh, been very, very active time and time again to get to this stage and soon to the final reading. So again, I pay tribute to the sons and daughters of Hinepu Kohurangi for their leadership and their mana. Tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou. Mr. Speaker, tēnā tātou katoa, ngā memo te